Well, it made a gan. <laughs> back at it, Cleet. Nope, back you got to go back Cleet. there. Go back there. Oh. You got to okay. stand back there. All right. On the count of three, we're going to draw our weapons that are already drawn. Oh, okay. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then on the count of three, we're going to shoot. All right. Ready? Three. <laughs> <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> uh, howdy, hoolers. Welcome back to the Daydream Arcade podcast. But this time we're doing something a little bit different. We are, uh, we're, uh, let's call this the Power Wash Podcast, I, I suppose. The Power Wash Podcast. The Power Wash Pod. Today we are cleaning, what did you call it? The Spanish Vista? Uh, villa, actually. Villa. What's the villa. difference between a villa and a vista? I. Windows Vista. That's all I know of a Vista. God. Now I have to look it up. Uh, hey, Siri. What's the difference between a villa and a Vista? Oh, it's oh, wow. It's taking me to Reddit. Wow. Reddit really has taken oh, wow. over our lives. All right. Difference between okay. villa and Vista and villas. Vista is targeted for Barrett students and has a variety of different room number combinations, while Villas is mostly Barrett and features some townhome options in addition to apartments. Huh. So, oh, yeah, I can see the apartments. It used to be for athletes in Greek life, but it's open to all now. Um, huh. You have some vague answers, so I'm going to be more specific. I have never seen the townhomes as uh, continuing to power wash. Uh, never seen the townhomes at Villas. Not even sure whether they exist, but Villas at Vista del Sol is basically an upgraded version of Vista. I don't. I. It, I, I what don't. Is Vista del Sol. I don't know. We're just gonna spend the whole entire episode be, like, okay, just being we like, figured. Hey, what's this? Exactly. <laughs> we figure one one thing out, and then we just move on to the next. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's bright as fuck. All right, so All right. we should um, we should get a game plan real quick before we uh, start talking to the people. Oh, you're already down there. I guess you do have a game plan. Oh. All right, never mind. Oh, yeah. No, I'll start down here. You. I'll go up here. Up there. Yeah. yeah Simple. Yeah. Easy enough. Easy peas. Easy peas. Easy peasy lemon deasy. Lemon skilly. You know, um, I recently have had a revelation about lemons. And not what, not what particularly about like the actual fruit lemon, but the flavoring of lemon. I have come to find that I like Sprite a lot better than I like Starry or Sierra Mist, whatever it became. Oh yeah, no, Sprite is absolutely superior. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Like, and I don't have anything. If you know, if if I go to a restaurant and they have Starry, I'm not gonna be like, uh, no. I'm going to be like, oh, my God, you guys literally suck. <laughs> Pepsi products not going in my mouth. <laughs> not in this Boca. Yeah, because Starry was just Sierra Mist, yeah? Yeah, it just became okay. the, um, I'm trying to think when that happened. It was, fair, it was for, feels recent. Yeah, no, it definitely happened recently. I, I, it hasn't been. And I might be crazy, <laughs> but they, I think that they also changed the way that they make it because it doesn't taste like Sierra Mist anymore. It doesn't. I remember Sierra Mist had such a distinct taste back in the day. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it something before Starry? Sierra Mist? No. In between Sierra Mist and Starry. Wasn't it? Wasn't there something else? Mist Twist? Mist Twist! Mist Twist. Or was that a knockoff brand? I don't think so. I think Mi that was a knockoff brand. Because uh, I was like, huh? I've seen <laughs> Mist Twist before. Are you sure it's not? Something from I could be just having a Pepsi? fever dream. I mean, yeah, fair. And you know that happens often. Uh, so. but no, that and also lemon skittles have become my favorite flavor of lemon skittle. skittles. Go hard. They do. My favorite are the red ones. The red ones. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not I think that it's cherry. Cherry. I don't like. Here's the thing. I don't like cherry flavored things anymore. Really, not a lot of people do, and it makes me really sad because it's my favorite. It got ruined for me. Because uh, it got one of my oldest friends compared it to cherry cough syrup. And then one time I had, uh, I think it was, I can't, I think it was like a cherry lifesaver. I just couldn't not taste Well, lifesavers are kind syrup. of ass. Well, and yes, like but also I, I, I just said lifesavers because I can't remember what it was. I, I, it was, I don't think it was lifesavers. <laughs> 
that makes me sad. I always hear people uh, say it tastes like cough syrup, like, uh, especially my mom. She judges me when I have, like, cherry stuff. Well, that's just wrong. <clears throat> um, but no, I, I feel like cough syrup has such a different taste than, I guess, Red 40. Red 40, um, yeah. The, th the <laughs> thing that, yeah, I think my blood is mostly Red 40. It's not blood anymore. Oh, yeah. It's just Red 40. I used to yeah. drink so much Code Red, dude. When I was oh when I was God, younger, I my parents were always like, "Don't." Well, when we went to family parties, don't let Daryl have Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh my God, you were like a little fucking. I was a little menace. fiend. Yeah, and meanwhile, now Baja Blast is on. Uh, <laughs> it's just available wherever now, so yeah. it's that time of year again. Unless they just brought it back forever now. Baja Blast. Yeah, because uh, they used Where? to have it seasonally in, in stores and at like gas stations and stuff. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah, I got one I on was... the way back from. Oh, I was in Boston. That's what we were we were talking about. What we were going to talk about today on the podcast, and I'm like, oh yeah, yes, it's a couple things. You were in Boston. I was in Boston. I was in Boston for All Elite Wrestling. Now I know I'm gonna. I know I just by saying that I just lost about eighty percent of the audience. But um, if you're still listening, bear with me here. Uh, there was a, it was a big night. I got to go hang out with our friend. Uh, Dr. Eggplant, uh, Doctor. as we know him, and last night was a big event because one of the most, uh, I'd say, important women in wrestling right now, Mercedes Monet, or as some WWE fans might remember her as Sasha Banks. Uh, hey. She's also, fun fact, uh, Snoop Dogg's cousin. Cousin, woo! And she made her long-awaited and very anticipated debut last night at the TD Garden, I think it's called. Um, oh, we went there for SmackDown. We huh? did go there for SmackDown, where we got to see The Fiend Bray Wyatt for like two seconds. For point two seconds. What a guy. What a guy, yeah. He came out and challenged John Cena. Yeah. Which, also, I we got to watch Ricky Stenicki. Yes, we do. Did you see the trailer for Ricky Stenicki? It's so fucking funny. I'm pretty sure we watched it together. Because <laughs> uh, I remember telling you about it. Ah, <laughs> you were the one that told me about it. Yeah. Because I started... Yeah. I mean, you ever have that where someone shows you something and then you start showing it to other people and then you can't remember who showed it to you originally? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Me? All the time. Sometimes. All the time. <laughs> you? All the time. <laughs> every time. Every single time. Yep, every <laughs> single time. So, yes, uh, Mercedes Monet made her debut. She was also fun fact in The Mandalorian. I gotta stop saying fun fact. Anyways, it was it was pretty oh, it was pretty great because she came out to a thunderous pop, uh, loud, loud ovation. Like my ears were bleeding by the end of the evening. And it was just a good <laughs> night of wrestling overall. And we love. Uh... Yeah. And of course, here's here's where I start to get a little triggered, right? Uh oh. So, a lot of people who may not follow wrestling, if you follow sports, any kind of sport, um, you know that online fans can get a little heated. Rowdy. A little rowdy, <laughs> so to speak, you know? And it's <laughs> very. It's the the online wrestling community, or is the IWC, as it's mostly known on the internet, as is known for being very toxic. Uh, not not all the time, but uh, specifically when it comes to comparing all elite wrestling to WWE. Now, is all elite wrestling perfect? No, no. Is WWE perfect? No. Professional wrestling is a very um, interesting industry i'll put it that way but i feel like it's very unpredictable very unpredictable of course absolutely you know because it does it does derive from, from carnies you know and uh way back way back in the day and it's it's just the discourse that i see online with fans just constantly having to say oh like these are uh like if if WWE has a great night and whatnot. Nobody will shit on it. 
but when AEW has a big event, they're going to be like, well, you know, you know, you guys may have brought in this wrestler, but it actually only had this many views compared to Monday Night Raw. Like, uh, show a company that has been around for decades and has gone through the same growing pains as every professional wrestling company has. All Elite Wrestling, the only thing that they have like against that is the fact that they're doing it in a national spotlight because they have... Uh, contract with TNT and TBS and they're on TV weekly just the same as WWE and it's it's wrestling right now is as the most mainstream as it's been in a very long time so I hate when I just and trust me I understand a lot of a lot of these tweets and stuff that you see online it's rage bait it's obviously rage bait however I also know that there are people out there that are very tribalistic when it comes to either company. Listen, if you are really going to spend your time being online, terminally online, and this is weird coming from a YouTuber, I understand, but bear with me for another couple seconds here, or another 50 minutes, because I could go on and on about this, but I'm trying to end this so we can move on to other things. But I need to make this point known. Because anybody that watches this, if you're a professional wrestling fan, I'm sure that you know that it gets annoying to read these things because there are absolutely tribalistic fans out there. And to those tribalistic fans, I say, if you want to you know, do that and whatnot, I'm not going to stop you from saying that shit online, but just know that your opinions don't mean shit. Just as I could argue that my opinion right now doesn't mean shit. But, however, I think that I'm a lot smarter and have a lot more, uh, I'm a lot more intelligent than those... <laughs> however, I am definitely smarter. <laughs> uh, however, I am definitely, uh, or smarter. Uh, how <laughs> <laughs> where was I? Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, it's all good if you want to only support one company, but don't sh go online and shit on other people for enjoying professional wrestling. Because I was telling Kyle this the other day. I'm like, the people that are genuinely, that genuinely act like the way that they do online when it comes to this discourse between which professional wrestling company is better, when you also have other companies outside of the United States, like New Japan Pro Wrestling, that has been around for decades and decades, uh, just as long as WWE, maybe longer, and it's just, I don't understand why people can't just let people enjoy wrestling. If you're going to be that toxic because tribalist... Nobody, yeah, like, nobody... I feel like, especially on the internet in, in general, people don't let other people enjoy things at all. It, it's not allowed. It's simply not no. allowed. You have to like everything everybody else likes. Yep. And not a lot of people like professional wrestling, and that's totally fine. Um, I also have a problem with people that always have the that always write off professional wrestling because it's fake. You know, we all it's it's not it's not the fucking seventies or the eighties anymore. We know it's it's not real. But listen, these boys, gals, and also non-binary pals. They, I feel like it's not that serious. It's not that to, serious. They yeah. just want to, like, you know, do this thing that they're passionate about for for a living. Or it, like, fulfills them, if, even if they're, like, a... It's like any other sport. It, yeah, exactly. Um, so, like, this whole entire thing about who's better and whatnot, <laughs> if you're really going to waste your time and sit there in this echo chamber, it's just... It's just po I just think it's pointless. Because... If you were really a professional wrestling fan, you would appreciate the fact that right now, like as I said, wrestling is more mainstream than it's ever been. There's so many different ways to get a hold of professional wrestling that you haven't ever been able to do before. And especially with the internet. And it's just, uh, it's, I feel bad for the people that are genuinely going online and saying things about last night being like, oh, uh, it, like, Sasha, like, she used to be, uh, better in WWE, or blah, 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 or, like, you know, this, this return is just super mid, it's like, it's like, what, or this debut is super mid, like, what the, f like, what the fuck? Like, why does, <laughs> you know, if you're gonna sit there and just be a whiny bitch baby about 
WWE and or about anything to do with wrestling, and it's. Uh, I'm gonna cut some of this out, but like W, um, if you're gonna sit there and just be a WWE lifer, as some of these people online are gonna say, you're just a WWE fan, in my opinion. Don't go and say you're a professional wrestling fan, because that's just uh, not gatekeeping professional wrestling, even though it sounds exactly what I'm trying to do. But you know what I mean, Brandicus? Yes, I mean in a way they're kind of gatekeeping. Yeah. Um, wrestling because they it's like, oh you know we can't just enjoy wrestling we need to look at it as every single week i just see people saying yep man aw is going out of business it's like listen <laughs> i went i was at the show last night there i've gone to many shows i've gone also gone to wwe i've gone to wwe shows and listen both companies are doing fine it like you can make many points that one company is doing better than the other in terms of money numbers, but you've got to look at it this way. AEW has Which only been around fun. for five years, and also, you know, both companies bring something different to the wrestling <clears throat> world, and yeah. it's uh, it's a shame that some people can't appreciate that or refuse to appreciate that because we're living in a wrestling renaissance right now, and if. And honestly, even if you used to be a wrestling fan and you've ever wondered if you would ever want to get back into it, honestly, now is probably the best time. Undoubtedly the best time. Uh, but yeah, uh, everybody had a good time and uh, had, we had some good food. I had the best fucking burger beforehand. Oh, yeah. It Where'd was uh, this place called Chomp. Okay. In Rhode Island, it was it's it was a bulgogi beef burger. It was like a smash burger oh. with uh, get this, they had a like garlic cayenne aioli, but they also had sweet chili Doritos like oh, crushed up. Chili. It's favorite Dorito flavor, hands down. Yeah. And Is it they, the spicy sweet chili? Yeah, spicy sweet chili. And they yeah. put they crushed a couple of those up and they put it on the burger. And uh just it was um like shaved ribeye on top of the smash patty. And yeah. it had um Was that like eight thousand dollars? <laughs> no, actually it came out to like sixteen dollars. Oh. Did you get fries with it or just the burger? Of course, of course I got fries with okay. it. Yeah. You always got to get what fries. What kind of fries? Right? Just regular fries. They had waffle fries available, oh. but I was like, no, I'll just go with regular fries. I got nothing against waffle fries. I love waffle fries, if I'm being honest. Like, waffle fries go hard. They do. What, what, what's your kind of fry? What's your, what's your fry vibe? Moving um, on from professional honestly, wrestling. Sorry. I, I really like steak fries. Like, I... The thicker the fry, the happier I am. Ah, uh, you like them thick taters. Yes, I I just love potatoes. I I me too. Don't blame you there. <clears throat> it's honestly the best. I also um, like curly fries. Curly fries go hard. Yep. Well, you weren't the only one that had an event last night. I um, wasn't. I went to a concert last night. Um, it was. If y'all if y'all know the the scene, um, I saw <laughs> what scene? Crown the Empire. <laughs> I saw Crown the Empire and set it off last night. They did fantastic. Fucking, it was my first time ever seeing Set It Off last night, and I have loved those boys since like high school. So it was really cool and very surreal to finally see them live. I was like, hey guys. I know He's you! Oh my god! And both Crown the Empire and the lead singer from Set It Off, Cody, uh, they saw my stories and they liked them. That's and I thought it was really cool. Awesome. Yeah, I was like, this guy's. I will say, so usually, well, back in the day more, I was, uh, I was a little menace and I went into the pit a lot. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to like a a rock or like a you know a rock a, a metal 
metal concert, and there's like a lot of mosh pits and stuff. Um, usually, like I said, I would go into the pit and you know have fun, whatever. But I haven't, I haven't really done that in a while. And um, usually, I'm more in the back if I'm like able to see, because your girl is short, <laughs> so being in the pit is hard and it's rough. Um, what's it called? But last night, I was like, let me be, let me be kind of crazy. I went alone last night, so I didn't really, like, have someone to drag along with me. So I was like, I'm just going to go into the pit for Crown the Empire set. Mm. And if it goes well, I'll stay in there for set it off. And if I don't, I'll die. And if I don't, fuck. (laughs) Um, So I go into the pit. Everything's all good. There's like a group of gals behind me. They, they've been, they were nice. It was all, it was all dandy. Um, then like right before the show is going to start, I see this dude and his girlfriend. This motherfucker is like seven feet fucking tall. Ooh. And he's like, oh, let me like pass by you. I thought he was just going to go like, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Dude stops right in front of me. Oh. So he is covering the entire stage. I cannot see a goddamn thing because I am 5'2", and I can't see a goddamn thing. So I'm there. I'm like, all right, I'll just listen to the fucking music. So then Crown the Empire comes on. They're playing bangers, doing fantastic. They they had an amazing set, but it was kind of ruined because I could not see a goddamn thing. And then when the mosh pits start happening, you know... Uh, if you've ever been in like the crowd where a mosh pit is happening, there's a lot of pushing and you know, a lot of the people in front of you will kind of lean back because they're being pushed and whatever. So, you know, usually the etiquette is just kind of like push them back to keep them up, make sure they don't fall. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's all happening. He starts just start leaning back without any fucking anybody pushing him. He's just like leaning on fucking me and I am literally half his size. So he's like leaning all up on my shit and me and the other girls are trying to push him fucking up so he would stop. And this motherfucker gets annoyed and he starts like pushing us off. What the fuck? Like, yeah. And like moving our arms and shit and just like being a fucking asshole. And I'm like, bro, you are the literal tallest person in this motherfucking pit. Why the fuck could you not stand literally anywhere else? You did, you looked at the smallest gal and in this fucking crowd. Chose to stand in front of her. And then said, I'm going to stand right here. With with your fucking girlfriend. What a fucking penis. He was such a bitch. It, was, it really pissed me off and it like ruined the set for me. But uh, well, like, all in all, Crown the Empire did fantastic. Um, I really wish that motherfucker would have been anywhere else besides in front of me and in front of a group of girls that he very clearly saw because he asked to like go and like pass by in front of us, but instead he just stopped mm. and just stayed there. So that was real fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, and that was the whole concert. <clears throat> Say it again. That was the whole concert. No, it was just uh. So there were. Th- two openers before set it off and it was um death by romy and uh crown the empire so for death by romy i was just kind of by the bar i was able to kind of see her like it was whatever there were a lot of people in front of me but like it wasn't as crowded as it was in the pit Mm -hmm. so i was able to see her she did great um i saw her open up for uh the used and pierce the veil Ooh. Uh, last last year, she did great. She hell of a voice, and she can scream like crazy. It's pretty awesome. Nice. Um, so I saw her. It was great. And then I was like, all right, let me be crazy and get into the pit for Crown the Empire. And then that's when that all went down. I was like, and I regret it. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> as soon as the set finished, I got my ass out of there. Yeah, You're not was, too old for the pit. You're just uh, too old to deal with assholes. Yes, it was really fucking exhausting. I'm like, you're a, you're a piece of shit. Who, hey, whoever you were standing in front of me, you fucking suck. Yeah. And I hope and I hope you had a bad day. Anyway. Um, then set it off came and I was towards like 
I guess the side of the stage, there were like um, little like railings you could stand and there was like stools and stuff that you can sit. And it's just not as chaotic. It was like kind of by the bar, mm. but it was closer than it was when I was by when I was watching Death by Romy. Um, they did fan fucking tastic. They played so many bangers and so many good songs from back in the day. And then they did a 10 song medley that was fucking awesome. And just, wow, just truly incredible. And they were very wholesome. And they were just, you could tell they were just very thankful because this is their uh, first headlining tour. Oh, and they've been a band nice. for 15 years now. Wow. So good for them. They, yeah. So they were, they're like the biggest they, they've ever been right now. Yeah. And so you can tell that they were very humbled by it and very, very ecstatic. And it was the first show of the tour. So they were hype as fuck. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all in all, it was a very good night. I very much enjoyed and very thankful that I was finally able to see them. And yeah, it was just awesome. I, I've seen, I wasn't really that mad for Crown the Empire because I've seen them so many times now. That this was probably like my sixth time seeing them. Nice. So I was like, it's fine. Like, they still played a whole bunch of bangers. I was still able to sing my head off. Um, just couldn't see them. <laughs> God. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, if you ever if you ever uh, run into that guy again, just... Um... Punch him in the face. <laughs> yeah, if you can reach him. <laughs> if I can reach I was just about to say, if I can reach. <laughs> It was so fucking tall. Uh, I'm like, oh my god, good for you. You can see fucking everything. He was actually in actuality. He actually wasn't seven feet tall. He was just five, he was just like five foot five. Oh, oh no! Can like, you imagine? Do you think? <laughs> I could have gone. Like I, I, I could have like gone I'm four seven. Yeah, I could have like gone four foot seven. so much higher than that. You're five two, you and five, I'm five five. five. I could have gone like, so what? much higher. I'll go kill myself. Sorry. I, I, <laughs> How tall did I look to you? Because we, uh, Kyle and I, we drove past Quincy Market, and, um, you know, I think, oh yeah, Quincy Market. That's, a, I, for some reason, I was like, no, that's in Seattle. No, I was thinking of Pike Place. Um, oh yeah, that was the little market we went to, right? Yeah, that's where we met. Yes. We were reminiscing about that. Cute. What was the question? Um, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, how tall did I look to you when you first saw me running around the corner? Uh, definitely like like five ten. Five ten. Well, you would be correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, yeah, you look your height. I you look you look your height for your age. Yeah, you look your height for your age. Yeah, I'm a very mature five ten. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm a fucking child. <laughs> that's why. I'm, that's <laughs> why. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mature five ten. <laughs> Hello, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you you ever uh, need someone five ten in your life? Yeah. You know, listen, ladies. I know that you you, you you're out there <clears throat> at at in the night time looking for a ten. Well, I'm <laughs> a five ten. <laughs> I could be your 5'10", baby. <laughs> I'm having trouble with this roof, dude. I don't know what the fuck. I... What what roof? Oh. Um, <laughs> You're just standing on a bush. <clears throat> um, I'll just do the 25-degree nozzle. So, Daryl. Yes. I recently posted a, a clip from another podcast. A clip. A clip. Um, from another podcast. Uh, two white women. Is that um, the name of the podcast? Two white no, women? It's, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's called I've Had It. <laughs> it's called I've, ha man, I've Had It? Yeah, I've oh, Had okay. It. Okay. Um, usually, when you think of a podcast and two older white southern women, that's not a good idea. But <laughs> this one... They're incredible. Oh my god. If you haven't already, check out the fucking podcast called I've Had It. Um, they were recently talking about gay whales. Because they there was a study um that whales had sex mm -hmm. and it was gay. <gasps> That's it was amazing. Gay whales. That's amazing. They were gay sex. 
I'm I'm so proud yeah. for the whales. This is a big. No, I'm literally so happy for them. They're finally doing something. They're finally being recognized for the gay whales that they are, and they shouldn't be ashamed yeah. to show it. Yeah. Because there's no there's no rules. There's no law of the ocean. No. You know. In the animal kingdom, it's. It's okay to be fucked. gay. It's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah in the animal kingdom. It's <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you're a comical genius. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I I, I saw it, it was uh two two male whales just um They went at it. They went at it. They were like sixty nining in the in like the void. Yeah. Like not even kidding, yeah. that's exactly what it was. No, I l I'm literally obsessed. Like I love them. Yeah. I'm I'm Oh careful about so how happy. obsessed you are with the with the whale fucking. Whale fucking? Why? We don't want people to think you're into weird shit. Oh, I my kink is not whales. Like it's I, jellyfish. It's jellyfish. That that would be a, that'd be a that'd be a, an odd kink to have because you're gonna get that would stung. Would be a painful kink. Have you yeah. ever gotten stung by jellyfish? No, and I'm so thankful I haven't. <laughs> um, I, I've never. I've seen pe I've seen people like on TikTok get stung by dead jellyfish. Also, the Steve-O dude, thing, the jellyfish dude, hat. That's like. <laughs> <laughs> Getting stung by a dead jellyfish is the equivalent of hitting a parked car. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, like if the, the thing about getting the thing about the dead jellyfish is I've seen dead jellyfish in the ocean. They wash up on shore, so they, let's say that no, you're yeah. not expecting it. I think that that's. I don't think someone's willingly sees a dead jellyfish and just <laughs> like, jumps into it like a pile of leaves. Let me just <laughs> jump on this real fast. Just, whoa! <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm also disappointed that. You know how SpongeBob dictated uh, how it showed jellyfish stings as getting electrocuted? Yeah. I'm sad that that's not what it is. Oh, God, I wish I could be electrocuted by a jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I used to live in South Florida, I was very close to many a beach. Many a so beach. So I would always go, like, with friends and stuff. And, like, usually it wasn't even, like, a normal beach day where we, like, go into the beach it's just kind of hanging out at the beach right um and during like man of war man of war season there would be like hundreds of fucking dead dead jellyfish just all upon like the sand mm -hmm. and we would like walk all around them and stuff but i feel like it's kind of easy to not Step on one. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I mean, unless you're blind. <laughs> like, uh, it, I mean, like it someone's. Just kinda... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're good. I feel like I do that a lot on this show, and I'm sorry. Can we it's do okay. a real talk here? Like, I recently found out that I interrupt a lot. Mm, Not a lot, but okay. sometimes I interrupt. But like, I, I, like, I never thought that I was an interrupter. I thought that I would just like spoke fast. <laughs> no, I you'll thought... be doing that sometimes, but it's okay. No, I need you to call me out on it. I know you don't it. mean it. No, I, but I know you don't mean it genuinely. Well, someday someone's going to think I mean it genuinely. All right. Stop interrupting me. Thank you. That That's all I wanted. Okay, I got you. What um, were we talking about? Man of Wars. And Jellyfish. Man of Wars, what, 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 is, what, what is that? It's a jellyfish. Oh, it's a type of jellyfish. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... Hold on. I need to... I need to fact check myself. I need to Google. Yeah. <laughs> we always need to fact check ourselves jellyfish. on this show because the yeah, this is totally something important that people are going to remember from the... <laughs> till the end of time. <laughs> Do you guys remember that power yeah, wash? Yeah, it's like... God, why are you always uh, interrupting yeah, me? It's a <laughs> your mother. Uh, it's a highly venomous open ocean predator. So yeah, it's one of like the <coughs> most dangerous um, jellyfish. It's literally a man o' war. A man of war knows no mercy. Knows but they're really pretty. <coughs> are they like, like they're fluorescent? Yeah, they're like translucent. Translucent, that's what I was looking yeah. for. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like purple, like kind of blue. Like they, they're really pretty. Yeah. But yeah, they'll fuck your shit up they'll if you get stung by one. Fuck your mom. Yeah, they'll fuck your mom 
while you're watching. Yeah, and you don't That's want how that, up they are. do you? No. But yeah, gay whales. Gay whales. I love that they're expressing who they are. Mm-hmm. Like, man, like they said in the motherfucking podcast, even the animals are doing it. Yeah. So why is everyone having an issue with gays? <laughs> you fucking losers. <laughs> it's not a bad thing for animals to be gay, just like it's not a bad thing for human beings to be gay. Because at the exactly. end of the day, yeah. we're all gonna die eventually. Why the fuck do you care? <laughs> Literally, like it's, guys, hey guys, hey homophobes, shut up. Yeah. It's not that serious. And also, shut the fuck up about aliens already. They definitely do <laughs> exist, but if they yeah. and, and and but if they do exist, there's no fucking way they're coming to Earth. They do, do, look around. Do like when you think of going on vacation, if you have the choice between like the Bahamas or Detroit, where are you going? <laughs> Detroit every day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for anyone that watches our videos that lives in Detroit, but um, because <laughs> I'm I I don't know if we have any viewers from Detroit, but um, I'm sure Detroit. they'd all be like I'm sure they'd all understand where I'm coming from. What's what's the uh, their name? Like they have like a thing, the motor. Oh, the mo the motorheads. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. The Motor City, I mean, like, the, the Motor City yeah, Machine the motor Guns, city. the Motor City Machine Guns. That's a that's a tag team name. That's a, that's a professional wrestling tag team, the Motor City Machine Guns. Um, uh, hey guys, do you think Daryl likes wrestling? I'm not. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like I don't know what it is about wrestling because it really gets you going. It, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Big meaty so men. Smooth. No, if you if anyone who follows me on Instagram, you can follow me at the Dairy Boy. I posted on my story yesterday of uh, like one of the posts was um, it was the world title match, and I just posted the picture of our seats and the match, and I just captioned it: "Big meaty men, let's go." <laughs> <clears throat> Listen, I love big meaty men in their underwear throwing each other around like their life depends on it. Yeah, as you literally as you should. But no, like seriously, wrestling has kind of been one of those things that I just never You said wrestling. <laughs> wrestling has been one of those things in my life wrestling? that I've just I just can't not have my hands on. You know, it's just yeah. I I need to firmly grasp the wrestles. The Bresslers. The Bresslers. <laughs> Trish, yeah, Trish Stratus was the breast, breast wrestler. wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, because, um, you know, I, I liked Power Rangers growing up and that stuff. I really liked um, uh, just, you, you know, normal kid stuff that boys liked and so, also girls liked. You know, it's not exclusively. Oh. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, you better change that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Everyone, it's enjoyable for anybody, really. Yeah. It's, and the thing about wrestling is I've, I grew in and out of it in high school. I watched it less and I only had WWE available to me. I didn't have all of these other promotions available to me. And yeah. then I think it was when AEW, because we would watch wrestling in discord, right? We would watch. The pay-per-views. Yeah. Um, we would watch it on motherfucking Twitch. Yeah. Twitch Mixer. Yeah. We used to stream and like react to WrestleMania and pay-per-views and stuff. Uh, yeah, we live had on... watch parties. Yeah. Good days. Good days. Good fun days. And when that was around the time when All Elite Wrestling came into the picture in 2019. And everyone was uh -huh. just like, this is really exciting. Because they had uh, pay-per-view events before they had a TV deal. And we uh -huh. watched those in Discord. And I remember yeah. we were all super excited to see what it was going to become. And, you know, I, I, that, that really revived my love for wrestling. It really revived me. It revived my soul, my passion for professional wrestling. My passion. And l listen, you can say all you want about wrestling. Yes, we know it's scripted. But there have been plenty of instances within this last 
year, two years or so, where when done right, wrestling can make storylines that genuinely make you feel for these characters that they play. Or just feel? Yeah. I mean, remember when we watched the Cody Rhodes versus Dustin Rhodes th- at one of the AEW events and, like, uh, I'm pretty sure at the end, like, like they were, fi- they had like this emotional like hug, hug it out thing where you know they're they're actually real life brothers and they had this grudge against each other and whatnot and they finally settled it in the ring after this really big match and then they were faced with th- and then they died yeah they died and then they <laughs> <laughs> and then like like uh, Cody needed. Uh, he was scheduled for another match later down in the year, and he said that he had the option to choose a partner, like of his own. And he said that he, he's like he's uh-huh. like I don't need a partner. He's like I don't need any of like my best friends that I've been with for the, like the last that I've been running with for the last couple of years. He's like <laughs> I need my older brother, and he said I it with my blood he said it with tears in his eyes. And that was the first time in a long time that wrestling actually genuinely made me like I wasn't sobbing, but I was like oh my god, my eyes are misty. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm feeling. I'm feeling. <clears throat> and uh I think I and just if you watch wrestling nowadays, it is so much different than what it used to be. It you know, I grew up around the time where it was post attitude era in the nineties where for for lack of a better term, women were viewed in the WWE as nothing. As nothing as, as, as just and tits and ass. Uh when even during that time, women's wrestling in other places like Japan has was long being like respected and highly regarded as you know, and wrestling when done right is an art form in my opinion. And that's why I like that's why I've been so drawn to it. Because there's so many different things, there's so many different reasons to get into it. Mm-hmm. And it's just one of those things I think that I'm always going to follow in some regard. And if you guys don't like wrestling, well, then I'm sorry. You're going to have to hear me talk about it every now and then because that's part of my life just as much as it is a part of Brianna Kiss's life, right? Uh, you're definitely... Oh. oh. Connection timed out. No! We what? were doing so good! Brianna Kiss, I need to know, how much of a delinquent were you in in uh, your younger years as a child in school? Because I remember you saying that you used to be a delinquent. Oh, man. So, yeah, I used to be a delinquent in a way that I didn't do my schoolwork. Mm. But I didn't, like, I didn't have behavioral issues. I was always incredibly sweet and, like, very respectful in school and, like, towards, like, my teachers and stuff. Because I was a little goody. I was a little goody two-shoes. Mm. Um, until. <laughs> that one fateful day. <laughs> Until that one faithful day. No, I think um, sometime in middle school. Yeah, because I did good in elementary school. I was like on a roll, whatever the fuck. And then fifth grade came and I started slipping a little bit. I think that's really when my uh, ADHD started like coming in full force Mm -hmm. in fifth grade. Um, Like I remember my fifth grade teacher was the first person to be like, hey, you should probably get her checked for ADD. And all that fun stuff. And then my parents went to take me to my pediatrician. And she was like, she doesn't have ADHD. Whatever. And what then just the never f- tested me. Yeah. And then I didn't find out till high school that I do have it. And so, yeah. So I think it was a lot of, like, wondering why the fuck I couldn't get my shit together. And I was struggling so hard to pay attention. Yep. And, like, all that fun stuff was because I had ADHD, but nobody wanted to believe it. <laughs> I think so, it was very yeah. around the time where, because we're very similar in age. There's not really that big of an age gap between us. Uh, yeah. There, there have been, um, I think when we both got diagnosed with ADHD around that time, it wasn't always necessarily... Um, Ah, uh, no! It, it went all the way back there. Like... Uh oh. I tried to grab the ladder. I tried to put it here, and then I hit. I clicked 
and then it just went back to where it was. Damn. You know, I'm just gonna go do this the wrong way. Anyway. I think it definitely wasn't as accepted that it as it is now. It was more kind of like, oh, you're struggling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like right now, it kind of seems like everybody and their mother has ADHD now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm like, damn. And it's um. I I don't know how I don't know how you necessarily feel about people on TikTok that will post these ADHD, ADD videos yeah. being like, you might have ADHD if you do these following things. And like, it's just like normal things that people do. Yeah. And like, listen, that's not saying that they don't, that the person posting that doesn't have ADHD, but listen, I'm not going to get my information on a, uh, a, a, on like a disorder that... <laughs> You need to actually go see a psychi licensed psychiatrist for. Yeah. I'm not going to get that information off of TikTok. And neither should yeah. anybody. You know. I feel like it's it's kind of become like a quirky trend. Or it's to, be, yeah. It's cool like, to, to have, have ADHD. ADHD and like autism. Yeah. When it's it can very much be a debilitating disorder yep. that people have to fucking deal with. Yeah. And, and it's it, it's the same with like people saying like, "Oh, I I'm so OCD." Because yeah. they have to do something. That's or, something like, I've cut clean. out of my vocabulary yeah. over the last couple of years because I don't have OCD. I don't believe yeah. I do. I've never even I've never thought for a minute that I do, but I I do, however, have I ADHD. Do. I've been Damn. diagnosed since um, like end of middle school, <laughs> seventh or eighth grade, I cannot remember. But that transferring time between that and ninth grade, um, you know, in middle school the last year I was able to take like tests and stuff in separate locations because I was just I was a nervous fucking wreck when I took tests and I Me too. I was a very socially awkward kid. Like now I can carry a conversation with almost anybody, but it's just because I've practiced a lot and I think that I'm I think I have a good poker face. But uh <laughs> but no, I just also I've also just grown, you know, genuinely like um as a talker, I've gotten more comfortable. But when I see posts like that, I'm just like, ah, oh, man, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the self-diagnosing stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's cringe. It's like, even if you, if, like, they start listing uh, symptoms and shit, and you're like, oh, wow, I think I have that. You still and that's valid. see a professional. Yeah, it's completely valid, and maybe you do have it. But I, you don't. You gotta go get it. answers because if you do get answers, yeah. then you can get treated. Yeah, you know? and then your life will be ten times easier. Yes, um, like I just got back on ADHD medication this year, and it's been. I mean, I mean, you know, it's been a fucking wonder. Yeah. Um. I ugh, I desperately need to go to a doctor. <laughs> yeah. And get back on ADHD meds. And not everybody, and also another reason why you should go see a psychiatrist is because not a lot of people want to have medication like Adderall or like Vivians or something. Like, you know, usually, you know, you'll want to start on something that's not a stimulant like Stratera. I know a lot of, uh, I know a lot of people that take Stratera. It's a non-stimulant and it helps them a lot. Um, like, me, like me personally, I take Vivians, so it's like I... That was what I really like. Really worked for me as a kid, um, and I took uh, I took a an evalu a psych evaluation because I went a couple years without taking it, right? And so I had to go get tested again, which is why I recommend that everybody who feels like they might have the characteristics or symptoms of ADHD to go to go get tested because there are different branches of you know. ADD, ADHD that I, I'm not qualified to talk about, so that's as far as I'm gonna yeah. say. But you just need to go figure it out for yourself. And me personally, that was the medication that worked for me when I was, you know, trying to find out what the fuck is wrong with me. Um, mm -hmm. And so I thought that that would be a good thing to get back on because Stratero wasn't necessarily working for me. I was on it for a tiny bit, but I never really. Um, notice that much of a difference for me i always have a hard time when it comes to tasks and stuff i have a hard time with the uh, 
not just staying focused because that's obvious, but if I get distracted, I am not going back to that thing. I'm going no, to go do something too. else for like a couple hours. And I will put it off until the last possible minute. Right. Um, for for me, Viviance is, and also like talking with my therapist and getting coping mechanisms, and I wouldn't even call them coping mechanisms, but strategies, I'd say, to like, let's say um, something as trivial as cleaning my apartment, right? <clears throat> I personally like to get things done in one go. Even if that means that it's going to cause me a lot of distress and disorganization. Because you've probably cleaned your room, and anybody at home could probably relate to this. You've cleaned your uh, place up or cleaned a room, and it's uh, you try and do everything all at once, and then you end up missing a couple things later. You know? Yeah, I mean? no, it literally, I want to do, like, I'll start looking around my room, and, like, I'll point out things that I need to do, and then I'll just become so overwhelmed that I don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. And f for me, it's, it's, it's just that. And I, uh, I, for me personally, and I mean, I'm not, this is not explicit advice, but, uh, what I'm just saying, what helps for me and it doesn't, it doesn't always work, but I've come to find that the majority of the time it does work. I will do things in little intervals. Uh, yeah. Instead of doing everything all at once, I will do like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, take a break, go back 20 minutes there, and then look over everything when I'm done. And to be quite honest, when I do it that way, I'm kind of sometimes left with the realization of, why the hell did I ever do it this way? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I've been having a lot of those self-clarity <clears throat> moments this year as I'm inching closer to my 30s. And it's uh, it's been an interesting year, both personally and, you know, I don't know what else I was going to throw in there. <laughs> I don't know what it's, else. It's been a, it's been a personally and far away, <laughs> personally and far away. Anyway, as uh, as we're coming to a little bit of a close here because i think i'm almost done with this roof here how are we doing how are we looking on the oh my god we have so much more to do well not really yeah i know um and don't you have to leave soon yeah i do um i just got back from uh i just got back from driving three hours i literally came in put my stuff down went to the bathroom hopped on my computer and was like well, let's record something no, let's record something uh, I hope that... And now you gotta go again. <laughs> yep, and now I gotta leave again. Um, but it's okay. I'm taking my beautiful, lovely girlfriend out for dinner tonight. Woo! Date night! Date night! Date night tonight! Gonna go out, get some food. Get some food. How to go out, get some food. Uh, mom. Yeah, your mom's actually invited. To come, yeah, to come with us. let her know. Yeah. We're going to get steaks. <laughs> steaks. <laughs> <laughs> Why was that so funny? I don't know. It was just steaks. steaks. <laughs> <laughs> God. So anyway, as we're coming to a... Uh, this podcast is coming to a close. We're not wrapping up just yet, but... Um, <coughs> but Briannicus, how... How how is life treating you? How how are you feeling about life? That if that how wasn't the I most generic about... podcast question I could ask <laughs> to close this out. Um, I'm feeling a little bit better about life. I feel like I kind of have a an outline or like a goal of where I want to be heading. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> beheading, beheading mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's it called? You know, I'm starting to go out more by myself. I'm not really relying on anyone else to, like, do something that I want to do. And, you know, that feels pretty good. I've gone out three times now by myself to events that I've wanted to go to. And, you know, instead of, like, begging someone to go and, like, having them not really have a good time because they don't really want to be there. Mm -hmm. I just go do it myself. Yeah. And I have a grand time. You know? <clears throat> Fuck it. This is the year to start doing shit for you. 
and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I also kind of have a, a career in mind that I want to pursue. Ooh. Yeah. So hopefully I'm going to start doing, like, taking those steps towards that career. And, yeah, life is hopefully going to start looking up. Uh, I think it will. Yeah. This has been going super well. We've had nothing but success with this channel and, like, with the community that we're starting to build. Like, that's been fucking crazy. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's a good time to be alive right now. Mm -hmm. As much as, like, I didn't want to be before. It's, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. And I'm glad I'm doing this with you. I'm glad I have such a good support system around me. And yeah, it's, life's a highway. It's, it's been a good highway. It is a good highway. You know, sometimes you need to stop at uh, the construction and just sit in traffic for a little bit with the rest yeah. of uh, humanity. But, you know, if you uh, if you really um, want to, like, manifest, a, you know, a better life for yourself, there's nothing wrong with that. You just got to yep. take the necessary steps to get there. And I feel sure. like sometimes, you know, we're all dealt bad hands. Some people are a lot worse than others, but... I feel like if you really let, this is going to sound so hippie-ish, but if you let the universe take its time with you and you give it consent, um, <laughs> that you uh, you can really change, change your life around, you know, and it, there's really no age limit to where that can happen. I think you just need to believe in yourself. And I think I'm slowly starting to do that with our content and this channel. I mean, like, I have no doubt that we are killing it right now. And some people might look at it and be like, oh, you guys only have like a thousand subscribers. Like, blah, 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 blah. Listen, you know, that the success does not mean a lot of numbers or a lot of subscribers or a lot of money. It's nice to just see that we're doing stuff that people like still and that we can still do something that we have a lot of fun doing and as a reward, people watch it for some reason. Well, I know, yeah. yeah, you know, it's it's just, it's great. You know, right now life <laughs> is pretty great, and yeah. I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for what we're building here. I'm thankful for you. And by the way, speaking about like the things, you know, you have been going out a lot more this year. I just want to say that genuinely, not even for content sake, like as a friend, as this. A person like uh i'm very proud of you um the little shy girl that i met at pax east in 2020 <laughs> um I, I i i don't think i could imagine that um that brianna that i met then to be doing what she's doing now and i know that there have been times where you've been down on yourself bestie but I want. I just hope you know that you're a fucking queen, and you're gonna fucking slay no matter what you end up doing. Whether it's the career that you're going down, whether it's like here on this channel, whatever you want to do in life, it's you know, you've proven to yourself and to me, to your parents, to your friends, anybody that you know that you can do all those things that you've wanted to do. You just have to, you know, uh, take those steps and and do it and. This is the year that where you say that you're doing things for you and you're kind of taking life by the balls and being and, and like twisting them. The good old, the yeah. big old ball twist. The big old ball twist. <laughs> Which, by the way, I can never go to a professional wrestling event now without hearing a, a guy shout drunkenly, twist his dick! Twist oh his dick God. off! <laughs> I actually hate that. <laughs> like, I don't know what that's from. Is that from Dodgeball or something? Uh, probably. I don't know what it's from, but it's just like the old dick twist. Like, and like, it's, I, I hate it. 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 But anyway, uh, Bessie, I just want to let you know that I am very proud of you. And I am a, really like genuinely excited to keep seeing what you're going to be doing. And no, you bro. <sighs> yeah. 
Anyway, fuck you. This episode fuck has you. been brought to you by <laughs> fuck Friendship. You. Fuck your mother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Goodbye, everybody. This is Power Watch Simulator. We didn't finish all this, but look over here. If you look over here in this general direction, oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? It looks so nice. Oh, my God. What are we in? Halo? What is this world? You think I could snipe you from up here? I killed you. You're Probably. gonna die. Lay down. Oh. You're dead. Lay down. You're dead. Lay down. You're dead. Lay down. You're dead. <sighs>